Hey guys, it's Nefandus. In the spirit of Halloween, I would like to tell you a story. This story is about how the jack-o'-lanterns that we all know and love and are eager to see carved around Halloween time got their name. You see, there's a legend behind them. And this video is going to be the first in my This Is Halloween series. So if that interests you, then sit back and relax and let's begin. Stingy Jack was a local man, known for playing tricks on people. Anyone and everyone were subjected to his shenanigans. Because of this, he was not held in high regard by the townspeople. These stories of Jack's malicious mischief had become so widespread that even the devil himself had caught wind of it. And that devil, well, he decided that Jack's soul would make a good addition to the ones already in hell. One day, the devil appeared before Jack to inform him of his plan to collect his soul. Jack knew exactly why he was there. And at this time, he made a plea to the devil. If only he would accompany him to have one final drink at Jack's favorite pub, then he would gladly make the descent into hell with him afterwards. And to this, the devil agreed. And off they went. Hours had passed as the two sat and downed their drinks. Finally, the time had come to pay the tab. Stingy Jack looked at the devil, proclaiming that he had no money in which to pay the bill with. The devil scowled. It was then that Jack, being the clever man that he was, made a suggestion. You there, devil, why not work your magic to change yourself into a gold coin in which to pay our bill with? The devil nodded. Then we can both be off and on our way south into hell. To the devil, that sounded like a great plan. Only when he turned himself into that gold coin, Jack, instead of paying the bill with it, took it and put it in his pocket, right alongside a crucifix. And this successfully trapped the devil in his pocket. The devil began to beg and plead with Jack to just release him, and even offered up to him a bargain. If he were to set him free, the devil promised that he would not come for his soul, at least not for another decade. Jack, believing this was a splendid idea, agreed, and then he set the devil free. Ten long years went by, and the devil, he marked his calendar. One night, as Jack stumbled his way home from the pub, the devil again appeared to him, ready to collect his soul. Jack gazed upon him and hung his head with a sigh. All right, I'll go with you, he said, but before I do, could I make one of those apples there? Those atop that tree, my last meal. Only I can't reach them. Would you go up and grab one for me? The devil, agreeing, was unaware of Jack's scheme. And as soon as he climbed up high in that apple tree, Jack produced a pocket knife. And with this knife, he carved a cross into the bark of the apple tree, therefore trapping the devil yet again. There was begging, and there was pleading from the devil to be set free of the apple tree. It wasn't until Jack made him promise to never, ever come for his soul again that he would finally let him down. And the devil agreed. Jack took out his pocket knife once more and X'd out the cross that he had made in the tree bark so that the devil could climb his way down. Many, many years passed until one day, stingy Jack passed away of old age. Upon his departure, Stingy Jack seeked entrance into heaven. This request was vehemently denied due to his lifetime of trickery and consumption. So Jack left and went to knock on Hell's door, seeking to enter. This too was denied due to the contract that was made years earlier for the devil to never ever take his soul. Poor Jack was left to wander the earthly plane, having no place to rest his soul and no light to guide him in his travels. Upon Jack turning to leave the underworld, the devil threw at him a burning hot coal, and this coal was ablaze with hellfire. This would surely provide a light that I need, thought Jack, only it was much too hot to hold. So Jack, being the clever fellow that he was, found a turnip. In this turnip, he carved a hole at the top to insert the coal in order to turn it into a lantern. How Jack was then, he is still now, wandering the land for eternity in search of a place to rest his soul with only his turnip used as a lantern to guide him. 
which is where we get the name today for jack o lantern In Ireland, Stingy Jack was called Jack of the Lantern or Jack o' Lantern. It was centuries ago that the people of Ireland and Scotland would carve scary faces into turnips and beets and set them on their windowsills or porches with a candle lit inside. They did this in hopes that it would frighten off Stingy Jack and other wandering spirits on Halloween. In those days, in the Gaelic parts of Ireland, Halloween was called Samhain. And when the Irish immigrated to America, they brought their traditions with them. Upon seeing pumpkins, which you didn't really see in Ireland in those days, due to pumpkins being a fruit that was native to America, they saw that a pumpkin would be a much better substitute for carving a lantern than a turnip. So that's what they did. And that brings us to today, where the jack o' lantern tradition is very much alive, thanks to the legend of Stingy Jack. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. Thank you.